Hi everyone, before I start this video, make sure that you're a part of my Discord server by joining the link in the description box below. And in this video, we'll be going over A-Level Accounting 2024, October-November, Paper 2 to question number 2. This is Paper 2, which consists of 4 questions, 2 of them will be of 30 marks and 2 of them will be of 15 marks. And the total time limit for this paper is 1 hour and 45 minutes. Since question number 2 is of 15 marks, ideally you should be spending about 17 and a half minutes in order to solve this question. And in this video, as well we'll be attempting to solve it under 17 and a half minutes so without any further delay let's get started w limited provided the following extracts from the financial statements at 31st august 2024 we have been given the sales revenue opening inventory operating expenses finance costs and taxation we also have the statement of financial position at 31st august 2022 where we have been given the trade receivables share capital retained earnings eight percent debentures which is to be repaid in the year 2026 and the current liabilities the following information is also available. Cash sales were 15% of total sales. The gross profit margin was 35%. The rate of inventory turnover in times was 6.4 times. For the first part, we need to calculate the trade receivables turnover in days for the year ended 31st August 2024, showing the formula used. All right. The formula for the trade receivables turnover is very simple. It's just trade receivables. divided by credit sales times 365. We have been given the value for the trade receivables, which is 66,000. Then we need to divide it by the credit sales. We have been given the total sales revenue of 720,000. We have been told that 15% of it is the uh, cash sales. So out of 720,000, if 15% is the cash sales, then the remaining 85% will be the credit sales. So credit sales is just going to be 720,000 times 85%, which is 612,000. So divided by 612,000 times 365. This results in 39.36. But remember, whenever you're calculating turnover ratios in days, you always have to round it up. So in this case, that will be 40 days. Okay. Now, for the second part, we need to explain the difference between gross profit margin and markup. So gross profit margin will give the uh, percentage of the total revenue that belongs to the gross profit, whereas markup gives the percentage of the gross profit which belongs to the cost of sales let's write it down gross profit margin expresses gross profit relative to revenue or sales because gross profit margin shows what percentage of revenue is gross profit whereas markup expresses gross profit relative to cost of sales because markup is basically what percent of cost of sales is revenue because markup is basically what percentage of cost of sales is the gross profit. Now for the third one, we need to state the formula for the rate of inventory turnover in times. This is also very simple. It is just the cost of sales divided by average inventory. Okay, now we need to calculate the value of the closing inventory at 31st August 2024. In this case, we have been given information regarding the rate of inventory turnover, which is 6.4 times. We also have the value for the opening inventory and we have the value for sales revenue. And we also have the information regarding gross profit margin. And if we have the gross profit margin, we can easily figure out the cost of sales. Since we have the rate of inventory turnover as well, we can calculate our average inventory. And since we have been given the value for opening inventory, we can calculate the closing inventory from there. So the first step would be to calculate our cost of sales. So cost of sales uh, 
Okay, it's very simple to understand. For gross profit margin, out of the total revenue, 35% will be for the gross profit. It means that the remaining aspect will be for the cost of sales. So the remaining aspect is just 65%. So we can just multiply the revenue of 720,000 by 65% in order to calculate our cost of sales. So 720,000 times 65% gives us the value of 468,000. That is our cost of sales. Now, 468,000 divided by the average inventory So this is the formula for rate of inventory turnover. And we have the value of the rate of inventory turnover to be 6.4. So this should just be equal to 6.4. This means that the average inventory will be 468,000 divided by 6.4. So this just gives the value of 73,125. Now the formula for average inventory is just opening inventory plus closing inventory by 2. And we already have the value for the opening inventory. That was 76,000. So now 76,000 plus the closing inventory divided by 2 will be equal to the average inventory of 73,125. This means that our closing inventory okay we multiply 2 to this 73,125 then we bring 76,000 to this side so we will be subtracting 76,000 from 2 times 73,125. Okay, this gives the closing inventory to have the value of 70,250. That is all for the third part. Then we need to calculate to two decimal places the return on capital employed for the year ended 31st August 2024, showing the formula used. The formula for the return on capital employed is pretty simple. It's profit from operations. Divided by capital employed. times 100 because we show it in terms of percentage and remember that capital employed is all of your equity plus all of your non-current liabilities okay in this case we have been given the operating expenses the finance costs as well as taxation and remember we can easily calculate the gross profit because 35 percent of the revenue is the gross profit so i guess we can start there the gross profit is just 720,000 times 35 percent that will be 252,000 and if you remember the format for our statement of profit or loss we then subtract the operating expenses from the gross profit in order to get our profit from operations so the profit from operations is just going to be 252,000 minus our operating expenses of 165,000 so that will just be 87,000. So 87,000 is our profit from operations. You can show that working here as well. Then for our capital employed, we just need to add all of our non-current liabilities to the equity. So share capital is part of the equity, retained earnings is part of the equity, and 8% debenture is part of the non-current liabilities. So we just need to add these three values. That will be 550,000 plus 95,000 plus 45,000, which results in 690,000. This is our capital employed. Times 100. This results in the value of 12.61%. That is all for the fourth part. Let's move towards the next one. 
we have been given some additional information. The directors of W Limited use accounting ratios to compare the company's progress with other businesses. They are aware that such comparisons should only be made with companies in similar business sectors, but are also aware that such comparison has limitations. We need to state three other limitations of accounting ratios. The very first limitation is that accounting ratios will only consider all of our financial factors. It means that it does not take into account any sort of non-financial issues. Let's write it down. Takes no account of non-financial issues. It means that it does not take into account how competent the employees are, how loyal our customer base is, because those sort of things are non-financial factors. And that cannot be reflected by the use of accounting ratios. The second limitation of accounting ratios is that it will focus on historical data because while calculating accounting ratios, we can only use the values that have already occurred in the past. We cannot make any sort of estimations for the future. So that is another form of its limitation. Focuses on historical data. Then the very third limitation for the accounting ratios is that it will take no account of difference in accounting policies because if we compare let's say the return on capital employed itself profit from operations will differ if we use two different methods of depreciation and such differences in the accounting policies will not be accounted for while calculating the accounting ratios that is another limitation it takes no account of difference in accounting policies. That is all for the entire question. If you found this video useful, make sure that you like the video and leave a comment below and make sure you are subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future. Thank you.